everyone and welcome to my channel. Today's webinar is Dotting Control Process and today I will be talking about the blood test itself. The previous webinar was about the urine test and today we will talk about the blood test. As you remember from the previous webinar, I've been talking about the sample collection authority and the testing authority. So who is the sample collection authority? Is the one who is making a test in competition or out of competition, doesn't matter. And testing authority is the one who, who give authorization testing on athletes. This is the two difference between them. How the doping control process works for the blood is, to be honest, is the similar with the urine, uh, but there are some differences, some rules and regulations, what I will be talking today. Um, firstly, of course, you will be selected as an athlete to provide your doping control. Um, after you are selected and the doping control station is ready for test, uh, you will be notified either from VCO or from the check around, you will be notified that you have been selected for the blood test. Uh, the VCO or check around will visit you, they will find you when, uh, whatever, uh, whenever you are, and they will notify you that you've been selected for the test. They will tell you about your basic rights and responsibilities. And they will also, uh, before they notify you, they will provide their identification document. Here you have your right to ask for the identification document if they did not provide to you. Um, you must move to the doping control station immediately, but in some circumstances you might delay. General circumstances might be urgent medical treatment or medal ceremony, um, or you are waiting for the representative to move with you to the doping control station. But the last one should be approved from the SCA Central Collection Authority or DCO blood control officer. <clears throat> um, anyway, you will be in a direct vision of the chaperon or the blood control officer, the one who notify you. Whenever you move to the doping control station, it's the similar whether you're in a doping control station. It will be um, uh, the waiting area and it will be the uh, doping, uh, doping control station itself. Whenever you enter, um, you will be connected with the blood control officer. Uh, they will have a um, doping control form, either it's digital or paper. They will ask few more questions from you, like your details, to add it in the doping control form. After all, um, they will ask you to choose one sample collection for the blood. It should be minimum three. It might be more, um, even it's better for you because you will have uh, uh, many samples to choose. So you have to check them that there is no any issues with them and they are uh, totally clean and new. Um, you're gonna choose one of them, and they will uh, they will draw uh, the BCO will draw from you your blood, and they will seal it, and that the samples what you choose. After all, you have to put it in the plastic bag um, and uh, close it, seal it uh, like uh, fully that no one can open. And you will be guided by the BCO, by the way, by the uh, blood control officer. Um, after you provide your blood. Uh, you will see the barcode. Uh, the barcode is the same numbers as the samples, and it will be um, written in the doping control form. The one copy you will get, the another copy will move to the laboratory. So the laboratory itself, they don't see any information about you, like, for example, your name, your family name, your date of birth, nothing. They just uh, uh, will see this number, the barcode, and this is how they are going to make a test through the number. The laboratory will make uh, tests for the sample A, and the sample B will be stored. Uh, there is only a few um, uh, few uh, chemical classes that can be tested through the blood, not all of them. This is, we will have a separate webinar where I will be talking about the substances and methods. Join and don't uh, lose that webinar, <laughs> it will be very interesting. So after they uh, draw your blood and they, uh, they you finished with a sample collection, you will be asked a few more questions from the blood control officer. And if you have any other comments uh, to write down in the doping control form, um, if you don't have any comments or you have other comments, you will finish the doping control form. 
The block control officer will give you the copy of the doping control form and the other copies they will uh, provide to laboratories and other instances what they have to do. Um, in general, the doping control process for blood is the similar with the urine. The only difference is that uh, for the blood, of course, it should be authorized person who can draw the blood. So yes, you're right that you must ask for identification documents if you do not find it, if they do not present it for you. You have few more rights about delaying to the doping control station. But from my side, I would advise as soon as uh, I would advise to move there as soon as possible. Of course, if you don't have any urgent treatment or something like that. Um, I will, I'm going to share the screen maybe, and uh, I will show to you the some samples. Um, just give me a second. <laughs> so I had here some photos and I'm going to share with you that you understand the samples of that. So now you might see these pictures like the first one and the second one, this is one and two. This is in general the sample kit. This is where they will put your blood. It will be drawn from you like this one, that's the photo number five. They will draw the blood. They are going to put this here and uh, you are going to put it in that plastic bag. And that barcode, the one that you can see here, the, the, the one, the number that the laboratory gonna see this barcode. So number one and number two in general is the, um, the sample kits what you are going to choose and they will draw your blood and they will put it here itself. This is how it looks like, but about the doping control station, I would like to make a separate webinar. I will talk what is exactly the rules of the doping control station. It's just a sample how it should look like. The fourth one is the, just a bag. It's just a sample how uh, it should be transported to the um, uh, laboratory. And this is the bag, the sample, where will be stored your um, the blood collection. It's a cool place for sure. And will be transferred to the laboratory. This is also the samples where the blood going to be drawn. And this is how they draw from you the blood. It's just a sample for your photo that you have general understanding about that. So uh, that was about the doping control process for the blood. And uh, hope to see you at the next webinar and uh, get more education about the anti-doping and know your rights and responsibilities uh, about the anti-doping. Thank you. Bye-bye.